Sandra Osborne. It's a pleasure to uh, speak after the Honourable Member. He made a very moving and sombre speech about his experiences in China, uh, how sad it is that they have chosen to reject um, his arrival in, in that country. Um, the Chairman of the Committee, Mr Speaker, uh, made a very effective uh, and full explanation of what he called this uh, unfortunate episode, this unhappy episode, uh, and I'm sure we're all in ag agreement with that. Uh, but I'm pleased that we're having the opportunity to have this emergency debate to highlight just how unacceptable the actions of the Chinese government have been in banning the entry to Hong Kong of democratically elected representatives and also hampering our ability to scrutinise our own government's actions, as is our role as the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. It's very important to emphasise, as others have done, that we are totally separate from government, and I think that is something that is misunderstood by some foreign governments and certainly by the Chinese government at times. We don't take orders from our own government, so we are certainly not going to be deterred from carrying out our duties by any foreign government from whatever part of the globe. And I can't honestly say I'm surprised about what has happened because I was present when the Foreign Affairs Committee went to China in the last Parliament, as has been outlined by my honourable friend from Ilford South, and it was quite an experience. My recollection was that we received a friendly welcome and had meetings with many representatives of the Chinese government. But, however, as my honourable friend said, when it became clear that we intended to visit Taiwan, we were told in no uncertain terms that this would lead to serious consequences. And actually, my rec rec recollection of the particular meeting you described was we were more or less thrown out or asked to leave, would be a, a, a more polite way of putting it. Uh, as he said, the serious consequences did not arise for us, but it's an illustration of the kind of overreaction we can expect from a government that literally does not understand the concept of transparency and democracy, not to mention scrutiny and accountability. But taking the unprecedented step of refusing entry to a select committee takes the whole matter much further, and I believe this amounts to a diplomatic crisis. It is more than regrettable that this has happened, as the Foreign uh, and Commonwealth Office stated publicly. It is totally unacceptable. And I hope that the FCU, FCO will make the strongest representations of this and take the matter further, with a view to seeking a change in position of the, in the part of the Chinese government uh, forthwith. And I look forward to hearing what the Minister has to say about what the government intends to do. Mr Speaker, the committee have been working hard on this inquiry for some time and we have taken extensive evidence to date. However, there is no real substitute for finding the facts on the ground, as we have often found in some of the most uh, dangerous places in the world, who often lack uh, democracy. And we have, under the chairmanship of the Right Honourable Member for Croydon South, sought to conduct the inquiry in a responsible manner and in as inclusive a way as we possibly could preferably with the full cooperation of the Hong Kong authorities. Of course, our concern for human rights and democracy is part of that, but our inquiry is wide-ranging, and we believe it is timely to look at how the Sino-British Joint Declaration is being implemented 30 years after it was agreed by both parties. Contrary to the views of the Chinese government, Lord Patton told us that the terms of the 1984 joint declaration between the UK and China, agreeing the transfer of sovereignty to China and setting out one country, two systems principles of governance, explicitly gave the UK a legitimate interest in Hong Kong's future. When China asserts that what is happening in Hong Kong has nothing to do with us, we should make it clear both publicly and privately that this is not the case. So we are not interfering in China's internal affairs, Mr Speaker. Notwithstanding all that, we have the right and the remit to scrutinise the work of the FCO throughout the world, and of course we do. So this snub by the Chinese government and the confrontational manner with which they have conducted themselves is an insult, not only to the committee, but to the whole House. 
and we cannot accept it, especially from a government with whom we have friendly and mutually beneficial uh, uh, relations. The FCO has pointed to the visit of the Chinese Premier in June as an example of the positive trend in UK-China relations, but it is fundamental to our democratic system that we reserve the right to criticise our friends, and this should not have come as a surprise to the Chinese Government. Mr Speaker, I hope you will feel able to find it within your power to draw the, to the attention of the Chinese Government the role of backbench MPs and the disapproval of the House about what has occurred. If it was their intention to shut us up and refusing us entry to Hong Kong, they have achieved the exact opposite and shown to the whole world what their agenda is for Hong Kong and a way we will not be able to achieve in our report. However, we have postponed, not cancelled our visit, Mr Speaker, so I look forward to the committee engaging with all parties in Hong Kong in due course. <laughs>